Welcome back, I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you can control by laying pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape that you explore from inside the Clomper, picking up resources and completing quests. If that sounds like fun, like and subscribe for more. Procedurally generated worlds can be repetitive. Having lots of different tiles does increase variety, but you don't get the sense that you've travelled very far because it all looks much the same. So how do other games solve this? Biomes. Before biomes, Minecraft felt pleasantly generic. You could go exploring for more interesting cave networks, but there was no sense of distance travelled. Biomes changed all that. Hang on, Rob. Biomes weren't part of the original scope. WTF? That's true. This is scope creep, but I hope to convince you it's a very small one, and I'll show you how I keep scope creep under control. The world is generated using the Wave Function Collapse algorithm, video in the top right. I've mentioned that so many times now that I've started explaining it to my children at breakfast. They don't care. Clomper's world is not a lush, sumptuous one. It's a machine hellscape. The so biomes in Clomper are a certain type of tile grouped together. For example, a hills biome has mostly hills and the odd crevasse. Or a crevasse biome is the other way round. Or, um, what is that? We'll come back to that later. Wave function clap decides what tile goes where so it needs to know its biome when choosing a tile, so it can favour certain tiles over others. Favouring one thing over another is probability, so let's look at that. To keep things simple, let's pretend that our world is only flat tiles and hills, which is how Clomper was in October 2021. The only tiles we have are these, a flat, a corner hill and an edge hill. Let's pretend that we've paused wave function collapse and it's about to decide what tile goes here. It can't put the flat tile there because it would leave a hole in the side of the mesh, so we ignore that tile. It can either put a corner tile or a straight edge. If it chose the straight edge, then the hill would get bigger. If it chose the corner, the hill would end up being a small one. Both are reasonable choices, so which one do we choose? Previously, the algorithm would choose one at random with equal probability. On a pie chart, it would look like this. 50% of the time you get a corner, 50% of the time you get an edge. But what if I wanted to make lots of small hills? For our example, we saw that more corners means smaller hills. So we'd want a pie chart that looks more like this. Corners chosen 75% of the time and edges 25% of the time. That way, you'd end up with more small hills. So how do we code that? With weights. A weight is a number that describes the importance of a thing. The bigger the weight, the more important the thing is. So we're going to assign a weight to each tile. The flat tile's weight is 10. The corner tile's weight is 30. The edge tile's weight is also 10. When we're choosing a tile, we first remove any tiles that just don't fit. As we saw before, that's the flat tile. It had a weight of 10, but we don't care about it because there's no way for it to fit. So bye bye flat tile. That leaves us with the corner and the edge tiles, which both fit. We add up the weights of the fitting tiles and generate a random integer between zero and that sum. In our case, the sum is 30 plus 10, which is 40. So we pick a random integer between zero and 40. You still with me? We're nearly there. We then check the random number against a list of tiles like this. The corner is first, so it matches all the numbers between 0 and 30. Next is the edge, matching between 30 and 40. If the random number is between 0 and 30, you get a corner. If it's between 30 and 40, you get an edge. I made this Unity Editor window tool so that I could experiment with the weights. Ignore the columns for the moment, I'll come back to those. We're just using this open column right now. I've put in the weights from our example 
and you can see there are lots of little hills. Let's now swap the weights for the corner and edge tiles and generate some new worlds. And you can see that hills are much larger because edges are more likely than before. I needed to add some new tiles in for my biomes. I could have started with some simple tiles that didn't need any rework, such as the hilarious cliff into chasm, but no, that would have been sensible. Instead, I began with the ramp. This is Scope Creep 2. For the first release, I was going to keep Clomper on a single level. To keep Scope Creep under control, I set myself a target of one week to complete the ramp. While creating, if it looks like it's going to take longer than I guessed, then I stop and back it out. That's how I control scope creep. It's great to experiment, you should definitely do that, but put in a boundary up front and then stick to it. For ramps, the model was quick, beautiful in its simplicity and my new editor tool made it easy to test. Inside the clomper is where things got interesting. The map tile where the little clomper model sits now raises to show that you're going up a hill and I added an artificial horizon to show your attitude. I also needed to adjust the damage model to allow for driving off a cliff and reset if the clomper comes to a halt on its side. It took three evenings, so ramp stayed in. I briefly experimented with making tiles generate vertically as well, but I couldn't get that feature creep working in two days, so I parked it on a branch. Next I added roller conveyors. When you enter a collider on the conveyor, it pushes you to the side. I'm using the Unity physics engine so I could apply forces easily, although initially not at the right place. They're lots of fun. I've got an evil roller conveyor tile in mind, but I'm not sure I'm going to show it just yet. I now have 13 tiles and there are a few more obvious ones left to do in another video. With all these tile types, it was time to group them together and form biomes. So far, I have three biomes. Open, where everything is equal probability, and frankly, it's chaos. Then there's hills biome, which can be a little tight to navigate in places. Finally, there's crevasse, which looks simple from outside, but inside the compa, it's pretty terrifying when half the map goes black. A biome is a large grid hidden from the player. White is open, green is hills, and black is crevasse. You probably guessed how the tiles are chosen. Each tile has a weight for each biome. That's why there are more columns in the editor, one for each biome. As you can see in the hills biome, crevasses are rare, and vice versa. When the algorithm is choosing a tile, it asks the biome system what the biome the tile is in and then chooses the weights from the appropriate column. The results are pretty easy to see. Eventually there will be more biomes, and they'll be more nuanced, but this will do for now. Previously, I moved the clomper using forces alone, and that worked fine on the flat, but with ramps and conveyors, the clomper would slow so much that it made it hard to control. I tried lots of different physics settings with mass, friction, force, and so on, but I couldn't get the clomper moving how I wanted. I've been avoiding implementing a PID controller because I felt it was unnecessarily complex, but I caved in and it worked, and the code isn't too bad. There's a link to a good PID controller article down below. In my last video, I showed a custom inspector that I could use to generate environments quickly. It worked really well at first, but I replaced it with a Unity Editor window component so that I could do more complex stuff like the weights. The weights are actually stored on the prefab, but the weights should be edited not in isolation like you would do in the inspector, but alongside all the other prefabs. The editor has allowed me to tune the biomes really easily and will become invaluable as the game grows. If your game is growing and you're struggling to manage your custom assets, then make your own tools. A link to some editor window articles are down below. I'm working towards another playtest. I have a few tiles to add, weights to tune, and lots of testing. I'm still going to do a Q&A video, but finding the time when Felix and I can sit down to record it is difficult. For a 12-year-old, he's surprisingly busy. 
Felix, what are you doing with the car? I'm licking it. I'm also tempted to try streaming, possibly when I'm testing the game or building it. Do you watch streams? Would you be interested in watching me code and play my game badly for fun? Please let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this and got this far through, then please do like and subscribe. And until next time, bye bye. Cut. And then that was a miss. How can you miss my face? You don't have to throw it so hard. You just have to get me in the face. How hard is this? Right. I know it's toast, but it's just... exactly aerodynamic. My, my face is enormous. Why? I've got an enormous face. Yeah, you face. have got a big face, but it, your brain isn't big enough. That's true. Right, let's go then. Okay, wait for me to describe a bit. Just don't toast me to start with. Okay. <laughs> the one's probably... Oh, why are you throwing it so hard? You don't have to take me out. You don't have to frag me with toast. Just... Hit me in the right, face with it. Oh my goodness me, how hard is it? <laughs> Quite hard. Well, obviously so. <coughs> Rolling. Okay. No, you've got way to work. Dib shut. Like that. Great hit. Good job. Thanks, man.